Hi there, my name is Michael Minns, I represent Willis Machinery, and I am here to briefly demonstrate how to operate a Willis 1550 lift. I'm going to first start by turning it on. Simply turn the power on by flipping the switch, the power is on. Once the machine has been turned on, you simply walk to the front, disengage the emergency stop switch, the power indicator light is on, and the machine is ready to operate. Once the machine is ready to operate and you're ready to go, you usually want to choose your RPM or what the spindle will run at. Right now, the spindle will run at 260 RPMs as indicated by the green lining up with the green on all three pieces. If you wanted to change it, you simply move the dials around so the colors and the RPM match what you want. For instance, if we want to move to 360 RPMs, we simply move everything so the orange in the colors line up so the spindle will operate. As this is a geared head lathe, if it doesn't engage right away, you simply move the spindle around and the gears will line up and you'll be able to line up just as that just occurred right there. Now, we have all of the orange lined up, so 360 RPMs is what this lathe will operate at. So, we simply engage this to turn on the spindle. Right now the spindle is moving forward. If you choose to stop this, you can stop it with a foot brake. Bring this down in those directions. Now that we have our RPM all dialed into exactly where we want it, I'll show you some other stages or steps that we go through on this machine. For instance, this dial right here, this lever right here, switches the gear case from high to low and this one will reverse the direction of the feed gear case. <clears throat> so what we can do when we just want to change the high to low or reverse the direction, we simply move the handle up or down, low being up here, high being down below. As you can see there for a second, it didn't fall right into place it is, as it is a geared head lathe. Simply had to move the spindle back and forth until the teeth of the gears met. Here, if you want to reverse the direction of the feed gear case, you simply change it to the direction that you want it to go, and again, with the spindle. This also brings up another point, which is this green button right here, which is a jog button of the spindle. Oftentimes, as you saw earlier, I was able to jog the spindle by hand because it was in high gear. If you're in down, down low, and if you're doing low RPMs and you're in low gear, it becomes more difficult to move the spindle by hand, so you have a jog button which will help you get these gears to mate. You also have your coolant. Simply turn the coolant on, turn the coolant off for whenever you need coolant to be used in this lathe. It is very important that anything that is done above this line here is done while the spindle is not running, so we don't damage any of the gears inside of the gear case or the, head, the headstock. What is very important though is everything below here, as indicated by this yellow placard, the machine must be running while you're adjusting everything and nothing will be damaged. So it's very important that it's not running from above and down below it is still running. <clears throat> what these do here is they give you your various rates, your feed rates, you know, whether you're doing a metric cut or an inch cut and how fast or slow or into various pitches, things like that. Now we're going to talk about shifting gears for your various feed rates and different cuts and threads and what you may be doing for your operation. And as I had mentioned earlier, everything from here down below is best done while the spindle is operating. We do recommend that you do it in a relatively slow RPM just for safety's sake, but the manufacturer does state that this lathe is safe to operate and shift through any of the RPM ranges all the way up to 2000. But because of that, I'm going to shift slowly down to 260, uh, just the same way that I uh, demonstrated earlier. 260 is green, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the green up with 260 up to the green that's up top here. Right now we have the green lining up with the green here on 260 up with the green. Now this machine will operate at 260 RPM. So I simply move over here, turn the machine on. And now I can change my gears or shift my gears however I deem necessary. For now, let's go to 30 thousandths. <clears throat> so we'll do LCR8. L represented in low gear, which this machine is already in. C, which this lever is right now. We'll come to R, 
and right now we'll have to move this lever from S to R while the spindle is running. Now we're at R, as you can see, this shaft started spinning because we have now activated that. Now once that has gone to R, 30,000, so you go to 8. So what we'll do is we'll bring this shaft down here to the bottom, which is 8. After you have shifted this lever to the number 8 that is recommended here on this chart, you look over here, you see the Y that is on the top of this chart, which indicated by this lever right here, which coincidentally it is already in. The last item is this mark right here, which is a simple squiggly that refers to this right here. This is already in its position, so everything is working correctly. Once everything is engaged correctly, you can have the cross slide move back and forth along the screw as required, simply by engaging the shaft. You can now see as this handle turns, this cross slide is now being engaged throughout the Z-axis. If you would like to disengage it, you can simply push this down and it is no longer engaged. If you'd like to stop the spindle completely, you can either drift this down in the neutral position or you can press the brake. And the machine is now down. We are now going to show you the various functions of the apron on this Willis 1550 lathe. We will start by turning on the spindle. As we can see, the feed screw is rotating because we had selected the various pitches and, and rates that we wanted on the headstock earlier during the demonstration. Now we will engage the z-axis of the apron of the cross slide moving towards the spindle. Simply, as noted earlier, we lift that handle up. As you can see now, the z-axis is now moving towards the spindle or the headstock of this machine. If we wanted to select the x-axis of this lathe and move this in and out along the x-axis, what we would do is we would pull out this knob right here. Simply pull out that knob and you can see the axis have changed. The z-axis is no longer functioning and the x-axis is moving in and out. If we decided to change the direction of that, that would be done by this knob right here. As you can see, when that is pushed in, this will change rotation. The same goes for this. As this is pushed in, this is now moving in a different rotation than it was before, now moving away from the spindle along the z-axis. And once we want to stop that, we can simply disengage. And to show you, as I had mentioned earlier, that you, in fact, do not require the brake to stop this, you can simply move the uh, feed lever into neutral position and it will coast to a stop very safely. We will now demonstrate how to engage the half nut to cut a thread of whatever is desired. We will start by engaging the spindle. The spindle is now on. As you can see, the lead screw and the feed shaft are rotating, as well as the indicator dial for your thread pitches. What we can do now is, if we want to cut even threads, we will simply engage the half nut. And if we wanted to, as I said, cut even threads, if you came off and you re-engage, you simply engage on any of the provided marks, whether it be a one, a hash mark, any of the numbers, or hash marks. If we're cutting odd threads, you can engage it, but you want to engage it on any of the numbers, not the hash marks. You can re-engage it on any number, but not the hash marks for an odd thread. If you were doing a fractional thread or a half pitch, you would need to engage it on the exact same number that you put it on originally. For instance, if you put it on a one, you would have to re-engage it back on the exact same one. And right here, this little dot right here, is the mark that would indicate the location of where you want to do that. Uh, these are inch and metric machines. Uh, they are come standard as inch machines, but are available as a standard metric machine as well. Uh, and that, in short, is how you operate a Willis 1550 lathe. And that is our brief demonstration on how to operate a Willis 1550 conventional lathe. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at 419-537-1717 or visit us online at www.willismachinery.com. Thank you and have a great day.